Um, I want to talk a little bit about lightning scalability. Mm -hmm. um, what are the scalability limitations to the protocol today? Um, that's interesting because uh, the the lightning. Uh, so so my my PhD thesis was on the scalability of Bitcoin, and the sort of last chapter was, hey, look, off-chain protocols, we can scale using those. <laughs> um, and so Lightning itself was, was presented as a scalability solution. And it's always important to, to emphasize here that a scalability solution doesn't mean that we can go infinitely down that road and without incurring any additional hurdles. It means that we have unlocked uh, the next step of... Uh, of, of uh, um, of usage, so maybe you go from from 10k users to 10 million users, and that is already a huge scalability step. Uh, it doesn't mean that we get to a trillion users basically without any additional changes. Um, so when it comes to scalability limits of, of Lightning, um, there is pretty much one, two. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, so, so one is uh, one is that each channel that we have in Lightning uh, needs an uh, needs an on-chain representation. So, like I said before, when we open a channel, we take some funds and we lock them into a, into a separate part. We freeze it, and uh, we do so by creating a multisig that is controlled by all of the participants of that channel. Uh, so in Lightning, that's two. And the funds cannot be moved unless both parties sign off on, on what happens with those funds. So opening and closing a channel has an on-chain footprint. Um, and sometimes that footprint can be large. Um, so Lightning is pretty optimal when it comes to its on-chain footprint. Uh, we have one open transaction that is I think 250 bytes, and we have a closed transaction that is basically just dependent on the uh, on the number of outputs. Namely, uh, if there aren't any HLCs attached to it, then uh, it's two outputs. Uh, otherwise, uh, it might be a bit more. And for unilateral closes, that footprint can get quite big. Uh, so, uh, if there uh, if a channel gets closed while there are uh, payments uh, being processed, and it it might be uh, quite expensive to to close that channel. Um, so this footprint limits us uh, limits us to a certain number of channels being open and closed each block, um, and where uh, and at some point there is an equilibrium where we open and close the same number of channels uh, in each block, and then we basically hit the limit of, of the size of the of the lightning network. Um, where that is, I don't know. <laughs> that very much depends on, on the behavior and structure of the network itself as well. Uh, so if we get uh, if we get uh, uh, sort of perfect operators that that always take care of their channels and uh, every single payment goes through, no payment ever gets stuck then we can basically open channels uh, infinitely because we end up never closing channels. We can just reuse them uh, over and over again. And the sloppier operators get the less, uh, the, the, the more channels get closed, the, uh, the less capacity, uh, the less block is, is available for uh, to open new channels, basically. Um, beyond that, there are a couple of proposals that we have out there uh, namely uh, multi-party channels uh, and similar constructions um, that uh, instead of going with a two-party channel, we maybe open uh, open up to a bigger group. Um, so that could be anywhere between three to, I think in my last paper I wrote 15 out of 15 people, um, but we definitely can go beyond that now with, with Schnorr and, and Taproot coming live. So. Yeah. Is Multi-party channels, is that the same as channel factories? Or are these different? Uh, yes, so, so channel factories are one example of, of multi-party channels. Uh, so channel factories, the idea is to have one big channel and then you sort of split up into smaller channels 
using those funds. And so you settle the inner channels, you settle onto the outer channel, uh, and you can nest them arbitrarily deep. Got it. And uh, there is, as far as I know, just my two constructions, duplex micropayment channels and L2, uh, to really build usable uh, multi-party channels. Um, What's, what, what does multi-party channels do to the structure of the Lightning Network? Like, what, what changes do you foresee if that, if that is a reality that everyone is using these multi-party channels? So uh, with more multi-party channels, we um, end up using, using the uh, outputs that we have on chain more efficiently, right? Uh, when we create a channel uh, in Lightning, we basically, you and I now share a multi-sig output that is on chain, right? Mm -hmm. And that multi uh, that multi sig output can then split up into any number of outputs depending on how we allocate funds. Uh, so we might have ten bitcoins in total. That would be one huge channel, but let's stick with <laughs> round numbers. Uh, you own ten. Uh, you own eight bitcoins, and I own two. We now agree that we might want to create a third output uh, and. That, uh, that comes from your balance. And so we end up with two, one, and, uh, and seven Bitcoins. Um, but since this is all anchored in this one multi-sig, basically this one multi-sig represents these three outputs that, that we can potentially create. And among ourselves, we can be sure that those will eventually exist after all. Uh, now, if we take a multi-party channel with, let's say, let's not exaggerate, 10 participants. Uh, all of these 10 participants basically have certainty that their output will eventually exist on chain if we agreed upon in, in, in the multi-party channel. Furthermore, uh, if, I create, uh, if I create a two-party channel and I'm one participant, then I can basically interact with one other party. If I create a multi-party channel with 10 participants and I'm one of them, then I can all of a sudden interact with nine other participants. So it is as if I, ha I had created uh, like uh, uh, a, completely, a completely connected graph between all 10 participants instead of just one other participant. So not only is the, is the usage of uh, the, the utility I get from this one multi-sig output that I created on chain uh, is increased massively, but also the, uh, the flexibility of who can I interact with using those funds, basically. Right. And so on-chain footprint smaller and the ability to send and receive from more participants is great. Exactly, yeah. It's basically with a 10-party uh, MPC, I have the same utility I would have gotten from using 10, uh, well, using nine uh, two-party channels, basically. Now, where this all breaks apart a bit is how large do we want these multi-party channels to become? Uh, so one trivial idea would be, let's all just join one multi-party channel. <laughs> um, that sadly doesn't really work uh, because it would be great, right? And eight billion people with one multi-sig on chain and everybody can interact with everybody else. Um, the issue there is that uh, it doesn't really work that way. Uh, so there yeah, are requirements for you to be online because you have to sign off on any change that happens in this system. And the bigger the group, the bigger, the, uh, the higher the probability that one of us isn't there and we can't make really progress. 